Uh, well, you definitely like to start out um, league play uh, with a good home win. We, we talk to our guys all the time. If you're going to uh, have a chance to win your league in the regular season, you've got to win all your home games. And tonight was uh, a good test for us. Uh, Campbell's really good. Uh, they've got most of their guys back from a team uh, that finished strong uh, last year. And uh, anytime you're playing a team that has a, an offensive weapon like Chris Clemens, uh, you've got to be alert all night long defensively. And, uh, you know, I know it may sound a little crazy, but uh, holding a guy to 25 points, I thought Kevin Venata did a great job in holding their team to 79. Uh, I just thought uh, that was the difference in the game. I thought we were pretty good defensively. Uh, a lot of that. Um, I thought he, he looked different tonight uh, than he has over the last several weeks. Um, he knows that it's his last go round. It's a senior that's uh, started league play. Uh, conference games are hard. Uh, they're hard, whether you're at home or on the road. And uh, he, of all people, knows that. And so just watching him over the last couple of days in practice and then in warm-ups tonight, you could see that uh, there was a different edge about him tonight, and it showed on the floor. I think you, have to, you just have to make his catches difficult. Uh, he is uh, one of the best offensive players that we'll see all year, one of the best offensive players in the country. Um, he, he can explode for 30, 40, and 50. Uh, we've seen that. So he, he's just um, really hard to handle. He's a three-level scorer. You don't talk about that about most 5'9 guys. Uh, they usually shoot it from deep and can't get in the lane and score the ball. Uh, he's different. He's so athletic. He's strong. Uh, you know, you just, he's hard to handle. And so I thought Kevin did a nice job with the help of his teammates making his catches difficult. He was having to work to get the ball back and uh, having to expend some energy uh, just to get it. And so uh, I think you have to do that with a player like him. Well, the, the nice thing was that he was pretty fresh uh, because of foul trouble in the first half. Uh, he only played six first half minutes, so he was able to play the entire second half. Uh, he's, he's in great physical condition, so uh, we just felt like in the second half he wouldn't need uh, too many rest breaks. So in the last three minutes, we felt like he was well rested uh, to get open, to get the ball. He's our best free throw shooter. He rarely turns it over. Uh, I know for me, I feel comfortable when he's got the ball in his hands, and I know his teammates would say the same thing. Uh, so we know we're going to get quality shots, and if they foul him, uh, it's, it's usually two points. So, uh, you know, he's, he's a, a big reason why late in the games, um, you know, for me as a coach, I feel awfully comfortable. Uh, not particularly the, the press. I was, uh, we, we were up 77-66. We had a 11-point lead with a few minutes to go in the game. We talked about you're stringing together a few stops here from winning the game. You don't necessarily need more points. Uh, we can win the game at 77 if you string together a couple in a row. Uh, defensively, we gave up three consecutive possessions they scored. Uh, the possession coming out of that timeout, we fouled Clemens on a layup in six or seven seconds. So they scored three points in six seconds coming out of the timeout. We were saying, let's string together a couple of stops. They got seven points in a minute. And so all of a sudden, it goes from an 11-point game to a four-point game. Um, and that's, that's very different. Now, now you're talking about having to execute offensively to win the game. And I think that's what you were alluding to earlier. Uh, in a three or four point game, you do have to play well on both ends at that point. Uh, as long We could have missed the rest of our shots and gotten stops and won the game, but we gave up too many quick ones and all of a sudden it's a one or two possession game. Well, a couple of things. One is uh, we've, we've got a, a, a job to do uh, going forward. We're eight, nine weeks away from the, the tournament, uh, the Big South tournament. Uh, if, if these guys, if their goal is truly trying to win this regular season 
and continuing to prove every day. You can't do things like that. It's New Year's Eve. Uh, we talked to our guys uh, a few days ago about making a New Year's resolution uh, as we head into conference play. I said, everybody's going to make them on January 1st or December 31st. They're making New Year's resolutions. We need to make ours on December 29th and December 30th to now get locked in to the rest of this season. We were 13 games in, and you've got 18 uh, conference games. We were not even halfway there. Uh, so we were. our message was this has to be our new year. It's two days earlier than everybody else's, but uh, this has to be our new year, and we got a different approach going forward. Yeah, I thought the crowd was uh, great, uh, you know, to see uh, the community come out, uh, particularly this time of year. I know there's uh, games on television, there's bowl games, there's ACC basketball. Uh, the students aren't here uh, over the break uh, to see uh, that many folks in the community come out and support these guys uh, is awfully important. They feed off of it. Uh, it's nice to know that uh, what they're doing is getting recognized. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's a big boost for us. Uh, that's, that's a big reason why, uh, you know, over our last 36 contests out there, we're 32 and four. And uh, being able to do that here in Kimmel Arena, like I said, if you're going to win your league, you got to win your home games. It's hard to win on the road. So you got to win your home games. So uh, having that support from uh, the Asheville community is really big. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.